happens when you take an empty room like this one and fill it with some of Canada's most creative and innovative minds. You get new ideas encouraging Canadians to think outside the box. This is why Startup Canada, in partnership with Google Canada and the Social Sciences and Humanities Research Council, traveled the country to collect ideas from more than 1,000 creative, entrepreneurial and innovative leaders. The challenge? To build and support a creative and entrepreneurial Canada that thrives in today's digital economy. Here's a quick look at what we heard. I really want to see more integration of the arts because to me artists are like the real original entrepreneurs. They take nothing and turn it into something beautiful and that's the, the essence of entrepreneurial is where's the problem and how do I fix it and how do I turn it into something amazing. I don't think a one-stop, one-fits-all one approach for Canada will work. I think we are so diverse as a nation that we have to treat entrepreneurism and innovation as unique in different regions of the country. For me, a Canada entrepreneurial and creative is a Canada that mises on its diversity. And when I talk about diversity, I talk about gender, diversity of ethnic cultural, diversity of vision and approach. So, the Canada would have interest to mise in this richness to be able to attain a better, a bigger economic growth. And for me, it should also go through the three pillars governmental. Donc, les trois paliers gouvernementaux devraient développer des politiques euh, de développement économique, mais les trois peuvent travailler ensemble pour que nous puissions euh, justement avoir un, un, un Canada créatif et entrepreneurial. If they start saying, you know what, yeah, we're going to fund this, but it's going to be based off of collaboration and how many different types of organizations you get involved, because then we take down the competing for money. Because when we say this money is available only when you collaborate, that is what happens. And I think that's a really interesting model that I would love to di dive deeper into for Canada. If we're going to do this, we have to collaborate, but the funding from wherever those agencies come from, whether it's government or another agency, is all based on collaboration. One of the best ways that we can encourage uh, a younger audience of women to start participating as entrepreneurs is to show them examples of other women who perhaps look like them, uh, who perhaps come from the same places that they do, went to the same schools, have the same accents, all those different ways that we identify ourselves. You, if you can start to see someone um, who you relate to who's managed to do something, then it clears a path for you. As you do interviews um, with different people from different backgrounds, different communities, when they share their stories, it's incredibly powerful and empowering to folks who can start to see, okay, I can start a business. I think those stories are delicious. I think they're entertaining. I think that art or creativity, the, the ability to tell the story interestingly, is uh, engaging and it sparks the imagination. This sparked me to want to create something in this environment of creativity a good business. So I think the connection between art and creativity is not like this far. I think it's like here. I would love to see the creation of new forms of capital for cultural entrepreneurs. We've seen great initiatives done at the provincial and federal level where venture capital funds have been created for clean tech, life sciences and technology. I think there's a great opportunity for cre the creation of similar funds for creative entrepreneurs. I think that there are a lot of amazing funds in Canada and in Ontario for content creation, but they are only accessible to the television and film world. And I think something that we need to be doing is considering how we can extend that funding to the digital content creation world, because I do believe it will be a huge profit center moving forward. So, I mean, something that I'm really passionate about is this idea that yes, we need to be innovative and creative, but we also need to be financially viable. I think small investments in these content creators could make a big impact on their ability to drive revenue and profit. Our funding streams should be as creative as our creators. So I think that there should be some unique funding uh, streams that people can tap into when they have special projects that are important to them, especially if they have a social aspect, especially when it comes to capacity development, education, and even being able to share those best practice models. 
It's not sufficient to be somebody, you have to do things. And that do versus be is transformative. And so that means having problem-based learning, having real projects that involve real companies, and giving them the experience while they're at school, where it's a little bit safer, of taking risks, of making a difference, and having an impact, and thinking globally. And those industry partners, when I say industry, it could be a theater, museums, uh, academic researchers, whoever has a real problem, that's who is that kind of a partner. So you take the, the diversity of backgrounds and you take a experiential learning environment and you blend that with real world problems. That's where that collision, and it's much more than a collision in that sense, it's an integration and a transformation. For a more in-depth look at these stories and to read the full report, visit startupcan.ca forward slash creative Canada.